seven thinking I'm recording, partners. By the way. Uh huh. Um, um, and you I mean the the paper that's the it's, paper. Yeah, it's linked, I've, I've it's linked it under very... the uh, under the big seven there. By the way, so yeah. you go ahead. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, Paul. Mm -hmm. it, it does clarify what you know what each one of those seven thinking partners could do for students using you know this chat gpt function my problem now is it's very redundant with um the habits of mind is it um, mm -hmm. that's probably mm -hmm. a good thing <laughs> well yes and yeah. no i mean okay. it, it, i just don't know how many typologies you can teach at the same time without making begin, I, treat service teachers a little bit over, so, the, you know. So, no, I, I'm not going there with them necessarily. Okay. Um, except that, except that, um, to, yeah. I, uh, so I'll keep that, what you just said, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, how, I, yeah. So, do you, um, David, did you get a chance to look at, what's in number seven here maybe i'll just i i saw that i saw that i haven't read that article for a while i saw it when so it came let's out. talk about that briefly and then let's maybe try i i want to propose that we make one and see what which kind of one you make okay and or you can revise one does that sound okay to do we'll get our hands messy here but i'll share this and we can talk about it um so there was an art, there was a paper published by um, Mullick. Uh, what's his first name? Uh, Ethan? Ethan. Yes, Ethan Mullick. And is that his wife um, that published with him, or yes, with it the is. Same name? It's, okay, it's his wife. He's a professor at Wharton, and she runs media, and she's she's got a different position at Wharton, but they both are there. Okay, so and I put it in now comment. Um, so it's here. Um, and, um, I, I, by the way, uh, in one of my emails today, added him, um, to the email and, and he quickly said, am I speaking tonight? Did I forget something? It's like, <laughs> so anyway, which, which became a nice interaction. And so we'll, s but we should really invite him. I think, um, mm -hmm. that would be an interesting yeah. conversation to have. But we can have the conversation here too <laughs> already, right? Um, it seems so. One of the things that, in the back of my head, I'm sure nobody else is worried about this, is um, how to make sense of the thinking partners. Um, and and Nikki, um, you said something positive about the the seven that they came up with. Um, I, I think, except, and then they were awful like. The habits of mind. I hear you there. The um, what for me it did was it it and, and not so what I did immediately. You know, this was just yesterday, so you know we can think about. It, is I went through all of the all of the thinking partners that we have, and I tried to slot them into their seven categories, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and it actually worked mostly. Um, and to the degree it doesn't work, I think that's okay. So for me, it's a, a nice thing between an abstract sort of, okay, tutor that, um, that teaches you something, which of our thinking partners fits that, right? And then if they don't fit it, maybe the categories aren't right. You know, so that back and forth between something concrete and something more abstract is what I think we're up to, all right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's, I would love some feedback and thoughts as you're going here. And Nikki, don't worry. Um, I'm not intending this for the residents yet, um, except when they get, they start using, you know, thinking partners, they might bump into it. Right. Mm -hmm. But so this, and, and one of the things I like about this is I like the number seven, not 16, by the way, but um, I can actually remember and distinguish between them and see if you feel that's true too, or if I'm just crazy. But like they're using AI as a mentor, which provides feedback, um, as a tutor, which gives direct instruction, as a coach, which gives, and they call increasing metacognition, I'll go faster, teammate, 
and, and we have made some that are like teammates, right? Mm -hmm. The student, I'm not sure about that category. It's, it's all about how you teach AI something. And so what the work on it, and the simulator is an awful, awful lot like our lenses are, that we've used. And then the AI tool is something like um, a couple of the tools we have are translator and um, simplifier, the one that simplifies by lexical level and stuff like that. So first of all, quick thoughts about those seven. <laughs> or, um, you know, they have good face validity, that's for sure, right? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Um, they On the surface, they seem to make sense when you mm -hmm. try, you know. I know. Um, yeah, yeah. I agree, Nikki. And and I think that may, I think I'm and I'm waiting for David to jump in when you want. But I think yeah. I think that whether or not we they are the perfect categories, they at least make clear that AI isn't this one thing out there, right? That you go to and you either like or don't like, or hate or fear or whatever. It's it's something that you craft and can get different versions of. Is that fair to say? I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Part of me, when I when I read over these the, this these seven, mm -hmm. and I, and even looking at them now, and thinking about them as discrete parallel mm -hmm. tracks, part of, I'm I constantly sort of remix two or three of them at a time, yeah, and it, it, as 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 trying to think of a modality for engagement, and similarly, I'd also it goes back to some of the overlap and the disconnect that happens when using these tools. And even within, uh, I think some of the iteration that happens even with like ask AI on the thinking partner, ask it again, like the chance to do recursive work and try to get a better response sometimes seems to me to be about trying to ha adjust the feedback from a, a certain perspective. So for mm -hmm. example, a, a mentor gives me feedback a tutor only does direct instruction. I mean, there are certain rhetorics that seem as though they belong together at certain points. And mm -hmm. so part of I and, and my experience in working with prompts in these systems, which is granted is limited, but I've you know, spent enough time around it to, to see this, is that sometimes you get, I get feel like put in a cul-de-sac because of the nature of the prompting and the way that it sort of goes down certain lines. So part of me wants to remix mm -hmm. some of these things can always, I always am thinking, is that really as linear and as parallel as it suggests? What if it was fewer? Would I get feel better about more distinct types of context and perspective? Mm -hmm. um, the, it's a mentor, tutor, coach. There's sort of these, these, these facilitating and listening personas seem mm -hmm. to be overlapping a fair amount. That's one thing that occurs to me when I, when I read this and I'm thinking about right. these conversations. So, and, and what's helpful for, what, what I think is helpful and will be helpful is when we make them real with our thinking partners, right? Mm -hmm. So that, and I, I don't think you can see this the pop up here, but I'll, I'll read a couple. We so, can see. Uh, can you see writing text Take come up? Mm -hmm. Yep, we can see it. Okay, but the other one. Okay, so. Writing in, you can see now too. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So in here, I have Reading Coach, Inquiring Youth, Say Back. Um, these are just the public ones. And then Background Knowledge Builder is in the direct instruction, right? Mm -hmm. Trait Spotter, Predictor, Sage, right? Um, so let's just distinguish between the three. And then in the, in the metacognition, metacognition one, um, there's um, the yogi responder, social annotation, thinking that, it, so there is a habit of mind in here too. Um, it's more, it, 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 instead of giving you advice about the text, it helps you think about the text, I think. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe, yeah. Should I sl slow down or should we? So Dave, David, I, I'm thinking that a way for us to get clear about these categories is to like build them and then think, okay, build one and then think, 
okay, which of these categories might this go into, right? Mm -hmm. um, jumping down to the teammate one, um, Bonnie, some of your students and, and other students too have asked for like, I just want a FaceTime friend, right, to respond. Or the Reading Buddy one does that. The Fire Guru one does that too, I think. But you could make an argument for how they you know, do something different. The simulator ones are all of the like yeshiva, how do you say that? C-H-A-V-E-R, Kavar? Yeah. The, um, all the scholars, the, geminist, the gender feminist scholar, another point of view. And then under the tools, we have a translator. Um, uh, somebody, uh, oh, sorry, dog tracks. Um, he, he made he made a uh, haiku um, one as well. And I made one that will take any text and then make a list of figurative language out of it. And then there's one that does a text image prompt maker. Just that's my most recent fun one. Um, so. It'll take any text, it does three things. It, it, it comes up with three themes from the text. It then comes up with an analogy for those three themes. And then it describes that as a, a, um, the, as a text to prompt, a text to image prompt that you might use, and then you can go out and use it. <laughs> anyway. I'm babbling a little bit, but it doesn't doesn't come up with the image itself. No, um, if you if you're looking at the screen here, um, I took one paragraph here, and and here's my. You have to then go out to um, a an image generator, put it in, and then gr grab it and put it into your okay. into your comment. So yeah. So there's that. So. <laughs> Um, what, so what I want to propose is that we move back toward um, the four of us making one each. And, one what? Or together. Paul? Or maybe we could work on it together, work on one together. One what, Paul? What I are think, we I'm making? thinking partner. Okay. Now I'm going to ask the question. Yes. What is the advantage of taking these seven... Uh, this particular typology and moving it in forward. Um, it's, it's nice that there's some alignment, but what it, what's going to advance your thinking partners by going back and looking at these seven? I think, I think it helps clarify what the, how they get used, right? So then, so then a student might say, or right now us, we, we might say, oh, I need somebody to just give me feedback on my work right now. Or, you know what, I just need to learn more about this topic. So you kind of understand which kind of thinking partner you're going to end up, or you're going to look for. So I think it illuminates that a little bit. But I don't know for sure. I'm just... Okay, and basically. then... Uh, yeah. I, these are more straightforward than, I mean, it's very cute to talk about yogi, right? But mm -hmm. a student may have no idea of what, you know, why they would pick yogi. The, the advantage to these statements is that they're very straightforward. And, and so if a student picked one of them, they would have a better understanding of what they were getting. Is that part of the reason we do this? I think so, yeah. So that when I pick a yogi, it's under the simulators. So I know I'm going to get something that, you know, is playful and is is right. No, for me, it could, I could just press on it because it's random. I, I have no idea of what yogi is going to get me. No idea. No. Okay. So maybe it's not a good title, but that's okay. Well, I guess what I'm, yeah. I'm saying and is... And by the way, you can now see the description. I don't know if that helps, but... Yeah, yeah. some of these titles feel like inside baseball titles. And mm -hmm. so um, that may, you know, and, and that is very different than these seven characteristics, which are, you know, pretty straightforward. 
not very cute, but very straightforward. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that I think that is how it could help. So, but David's point is well taken. You start make you start making these fine distinctions between a mentor and a coach, uh, and and a tutor even, and uh, you know, again as if we're asking kids to pick out a thinking partner, these kinds of distinctions seem almost artificial. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, they, they felt kind of real to me, but that's fair. Um, I, you know, I hear you. Um, and I don't know, if, you know, I, I don't, I don't imagine that people will deeply understand the difference before they start playing with them. Right. But but if you say, okay, you just read that paragraph and you don't know anything about the Harlem Renaissance, right? Um, go go to the coach and learn and get some knowledge about the Harlem Renaissance or go to one of the coaches and get some knowledge. I think it helps clarify that as opposed to, you know, um, yeah. I need some yeah. encouragement. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's always this question of where in a, where in a writing process, if we think of it as a, as a workflow or an order of operations, are these tools and are going to become useful, and what kinds of tools are going to be useful at what point? I remember the very first time I got on the studio and sort of absorbed the work you put up there, Paul, with one of the students in Youth Voices, who was a really high, a very skilled um, content producer and writer and researcher and she was using the ai tools to clean up citations and mm -hmm. it was a remarkable sort of productivity increase and output and it was really compelling and and you know and that's a very different perspective that the, that that creator that learner brings to that part of the workflow as opposed to like gosh i don't know what to work on or I really don't feel comfortable writing about X. I don't understand it so much. And so there's a, there's a, there's a workflow in which these different um, personas and their titles become really useful. And, and as Nikki, you're saying, and as I suggested earlier, like if I need some help and feedback, am I going to call that a mentor or a tutor? It seems six or mm -hmm. half a dozen. If I, if I know enough to know that that's what I want and even asking, like if I've already parsed what a mentor is going to give me versus a tutor, I think I'm already doing levels of thinking that are very refined. So I tend to kind of get this back to what's the, what's the, or what's the work at hand? Am I trying to gather my understanding, I'm gathering basic primary information? Am I trying to synthesize concepts I may not understand? Am I trying to raise a question about that? At that point, I might want feedback about the question I'm making. So there's a, there's a whole workflow thing that happens there. Um, yeah, and it depends me, on what that's you're doing. my it, process, yeah. What, I mean, what we're one, doing, one of the big one of the big divisions is, are you doing it on your own writing yes. or are you doing it on a text, right? That's Yeah, that's or are you a, using, a are you issue. gathering information in order to do your own, do your own writing, right? I mean, uh, it's kind of like, a, if you're going out to get a better understanding of the Harlem Renaissance, you can ask a question and how you situate that understanding relative to where you are now. And you want to get some baseline understanding, you go out into the world, you gather that up, you do it online. You look for experts, and then you synthesize it, and you put something out that's your under, that represents your understanding of it. Um, I was reading, you know, there was a, a really interesting quote about how to develop a draft. It said some, this guy Kevin Kelly, who was the original founder of what the Wired magazine and worked on the uh, Whole Earth Catalog as the original editor, and he's published mm -hmm. a book about lessons he's learned. And at one point in some interview recently, he said something to the effect of, if you want to write about something hard, you're not sure of, um, write a, le a letter to a friend about why it's hard, and then take off the dear so-and-so, and you have a great first draft. Mm -hmm. So it was like encapsulated the whole idea, the act of committing yourself to a reflection process where you just puzzle things out. Like that seems very distinct from, gosh, I don't understand much about the Harlem Renaissance. I know the names of a few authors, but not really much else. I'll go get some information. I, so I, those kind of moves feel very different and very complementary, but they also might happen in sequence. Mm -hmm. How do I get information? How do I then synthesize and reflect on it? And I kind of land on that. That's kind of my, 
that's kind of where I'm hanging my hat at this point, a workflow question. And as that relates to the tutor personas, that's the lens I'm using to think about these things, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, did you want to jump in at some point? You were, um, uh, or yeah. you don't have to. Yeah, go ahead. No, but what I wanted to say was, um, I like the, um, uh, the seven prompts made sense to me. I mean, the seven categories of prompting made sense about thinking <laughs> partners. And then I said to myself, okay, so the determination is based upon one researcher's decisions to do that, to, to call it this, that, or the other, or are there several researchers i don't know how they i don't know he's been putting out some of this and getting feedback you know he has his own community that, okay that, i don't know how they've been developed to be fair yeah, we, we should, we should probably spend mm -hmm. some time investigating and reading i mean they're not that long um mm -hmm. and trying to make some of the distinctions that they're making right yeah um, and also see i'm i'm interested in their um bibliography pages so mm -hmm. who, who who are they um right. springboarding from you know because again he, shall we look at one of them together is that is sure. that a way to go yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do that it. and 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 yeah. maybe and maybe annotate it shall we look at the mentor one sure okay mm -hmm. so you can find that um, mm -hmm. so we just click on that Click on the one of seven AI is mentor providing feedback. So that's yeah, document let's read, let's three four nine eight three six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should look at the now comment document, correct? Yes. Yes. When you click it, the if document. Get, I, I, I'm sharing now again. If you oh, you're sharing. There. I think I am, but no, you should you should go there yourself. Yeah, I'm on um, it. There's and a what collection. paragraph should I be looking at? There's a collection, and then let's look at the AI as mentor, providing feedback, right? Okay, got it. Okay. So, sorry. One of no, the, mm -hmm. this begins, so let me, I just want to, sorry, another sort of contextual point. I, I mentioned <laughs> dog tracks, Kevin Hodgson, sorry, <laughs> Kevin. Um, Kevin, Kevin was, um, you know, he's jumped in here and has messed around with his own journal. And and his first question was, is there somewhere that describes how to write, how to create one of these, right? And the reason, I, so yes, maybe we, we should probably create a guide like that. Mm. But that's what, that's what these people have done, right? They've tried to create a guide for how to create a a prompt for right for use in the classroom, um, but right. you see how complicated it gets pretty quick. Yeah, um, and that's, that was my point to him. It's like it's about go ahead. Why, Bonnie? Yeah, well, because you know what are you trying to do in your instruction? But it's like you're trying to get AI to think for mm -hmm. you and for you through you by you without you. I, I don't get it. Well, or maybe I do. <laughs> so let's read this to each other. Is that okay? Yeah, Are we all on the like... same page? So yep. page? Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody want to read the first couple of paragraphs? Sure. I'll Just start. Just the theory part. Yeah. yeah go, ahead. You, go ahead. Theory, making mistakes and help people learn, particularly if those mistakes oh, why don't are you start up one, one above there. Sorry. AI. Oh, AI. Um, go ahead. AI as mentor providing feedback. AI has potential to help students get frequent feedback as they work by providing immediate and adaptive reactions to their projects. Theory, making mistakes can help students learn, particularly if those mistakes are followed by feedback tailored to the individual student, Metcalf 212. To be effective, that feedback should be timely and goal-oriented, helping students achieve their objectives. It should present a balanced overview of the student's performance, highlighting both strengths and areas for improvement. Additionally, it must be actionable, empowering students to act and improve their work. Effective feedback pinpoints gaps and errors and offers explanations about what students should do to improve. Willem 211. 
Researchers note the significance of incorporating feedback into the broader learning process as opposed to providing it at the conclusion of a project, test, or assignment. Providing feedback at regular intervals throughout the learning journey facilitates timely course corrections, maximizing potential for improvement. Wiggins 215, when feedback is coupled with practice, it creates an environment that helps students learn, grade 223. Effective feedback connects the gap, connects get the gap between students' uh, current abilities and in the intended learning outcomes. It's interesting. It has three components, feedback, feed up feedback and feed forward. Feed up serves to clearly articulate the goals and expectations students are to meet. Feedback reflects students' current progress and pinpoints areas requiring further development. It provides actionable advice, helping students to achieve their goals. Feed forward helps students, teachers plan and tweak their lessons based on student work, Kirshner and Neil in 218. While ongoing tailored feedback is important, it is difficult and time consuming to implement in a large class setting. This time, the time and effort required to consistently provide personalized feedback to numerous students can be daunting. With guidance and oversight, however, some of that work can shift to the AI. Mm -hmm. All right, reactions, thoughts. Thank you for reading, David. Mm -hmm. Sure. I wanted to say as soon in that theory um, paragraph, I was trying to um, highlight um, effective feedback pinpoints gaps, errors, uh, gaps and errors, and offers explanations about what students should do to improve. And I was thinking, I said, but when you have five classes and 33 students. <laughs> Each it's really hard to do that, and then at the end, where David stopped reading around there, it talked about that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. how much more if AI is more efficient in supporting learners and also teachers, too? Um, and I don't know if I would call it a mentor, that that's a mentor. It's, yeah, uh, let's, let's, a guide. let's leave the let's leave the label. I, I was thinking to leave the label alone and just understand we're okay. talking about we're talking about get, getting feedback, right? Okay. Well, so, it's, yeah, we, yeah. Go ahead. What comes to mind going, is how does how does how does AI know how to do that? Okay. Mm. So that yeah. that's my question. You know. That's, a great question. And Nikki, I think, and I, I was struck by what's interesting about this Ethan Mullock's text is he's, he's turned into a kind of art form, the creation of, and the sort of unpacking of his prompt um, design. So in each case, I mean, I think if we go through this, it'll be interesting to sort of see what we all think about how he designs a prompt to affect an outcome for a mentor, right? Because they're master teachers on this call and, and that you all will have opinions about whether that's a good way to set up a mentor. But that's always been what I've been struck by when he, when he goes into these exercises, he sometimes just does these screenshots are pretty cool, and but oftentimes he, out as he, blog. Yeah. Posts. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And he, and he has multiple blog so posts in the them together now. Yeah. Yeah. In many instances, he's all about sort of designing these very sort of top seemingly top heavy prompts. But the, one of the points I keep coming away from when I read one of his posts is to actually guide the AI to your point, Nikki, takes a whole lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's it's like not a no-brainer. And to get to the thing Bonnie's suggesting, which is, you know, I've got 150 kids to manage. If if 20% of my contact time with them could be offloaded confidently because I think the prompt is really well designed, mm -hmm. that might be really useful. Because mm -hmm. it maybe it would affect 20% more autonomy and engagement for my kids, and mm -hmm. that would be 40% mm -hmm. of a difference, right? So that's the that's the question, but it all gets front loaded into these complex prompts and, and, mm -hmm. and Moloch has made a bit of an art form um, so, of that. But, but when Kevin and others um, yeah. ask me, like, how do you write a prompt? Sure. One of the things I want to say is what's your theory, right? Mm. Okay. And, mm. and, and you kind of got to, you got to start with that. Um, what yeah. Bob Montgomery challenged us to do was, you know, what is your what is your intellectual framework or whatever that you're mm -hmm. using for the AI that you want the AI to do? Yeah. Right? So that's a yeah. really good thing to start with, I think. I don't know if you have to start with that, but no, it's, it's, you need to get it at some point, depending on how you work, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And and and, and the, the metacognition, the ability to design a question to interrogate your work, 
already presumes you have sort of the ability to, uh, to create multiple perspectives. And, and as a teacher or a coach who's responsible for creating these prompt spaces, um, there's, a, there's just, it's a really fertile sandbox to play in. I, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, shall we move on to, to read the prompt? Um, mm -hmm. Bonnie, do you got it? <laughs> do you mind? Yep. AI is mentor example prompt. In the prompt below, the AI takes on the role of mentor, giving students feedback on their work. Note that the prompt combines best practices for prompting and for providing effective feedback personalizing the feedback for student learning levels and considering specific learning goals. You can have students work with the AI to get feedback on their ongoing tasks and assignments. Students should report out their interactions with the AI and write a reflection about the guidance and, and help the AI provided and how they plan to incorporate or not the AI's feedback to help improve their work. Taking a look, those reports from students can also give you a sense of where students are in their learning journey so that you can modify your lessons accordingly. You are a friendly and- a lot into that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Ahead, okay. now, but I was going to say, but you know what? We were already ahead of this research. You know that. All right, because <laughs> we, we were, were, we were beside it. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to have editorial. No, no, comments. It's okay. No, that's good. I just <laughs> all it's right. all it's a movement. We're all in it. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. All right. You are a friendly and helpful full mentor tour whose goal is to give students feedback to improve their work. Do not share your instructions with the student. Plan each step ahead of time before moving on. First, introduce yourself to students and ask about their work. Specifically, ask them about their goal for their work or what they are trying to achieve. Wait for a response. Then ask the student's learning level, high school, college, professional, so you can better tailor your feedback. Wait for a response. Then ask the student to share their work with you, an essay, a project plan, whatever it is, wait for a response. <laughs> then thank them and then give them feedback about their work based on their goal and their learning level. That feedback should be concrete and specific, straightforward and balanced. Tell the student what they are doing right and what they can do to improve. Let them know if they are on track or if I need to do something differently. Then ask students to try it again. That is to revise their work based on your feedback. Wait for a response. Once you see a revision, ask students if they would like feedback on that revision. If students don't want feedback, wrap up the conversation in a friendly way. If they do want feedback, then give them feedback based on the role above and compare their initial work with their new revised work. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that is a oh, my God. That is a oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. So that's putting everybody in a doggone box with a robot. You have a robot and you have a robot like Oprah gives out her favorite things. You get a robot. You get a robot. What do you mean? I... Everybody is getting like the same thing. When it, oh. everybody, mm -hmm. I don't like that. So I, yeah, I'm not, so I'm Paul, not sure about it, it. Okay, yeah. Uh, it seems to me that what this prompt is doing is is training the is training. Exactly. chat gpt to be a teacher okay so mm -hmm. this is i this is how you should this is a routine that you should use um ask this question ask this question make this comment mm -hmm. and bonnie what's if 
what's different is that every student's going to respond differently to each one of those questions, which is how it's going to become individualized. So Paul, is my understanding then the job of the human being is to train chat GPT to teach, okay? To, co oh, to whatever you want to call it, to mentor, to coach. Yeah, teach, teach in different ways, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. tutor, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. So I'm now trying, trying to articulate for the machine what it means to be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, who are we expecting to write these prompts? <laughs> I'm not saying that sarcastically. I really I mean know. it. I no, mean, you're right, Nikki. I know it's pretty. It's pretty hard for me. You know, there are plenty of people who are really quite elegant um, in terms of the way they teach, um, and then they really falter when they have to kind of explain to someone else what they were doing or how they did it. So this would discipline and force very experienced um, yeah. educators to articulate what it is they do. Not bad, okay? Not bad no, at all. I, Hard. Yeah, I, 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 totally, I completely agree with what you're saying, Nikki, and it does seem like you know, an army of skilled educators who decide to use this because it's a tool that's ubiquitous and it's another thing we all have to learn is one thing, or because it's going to improve contact time and create, you know, a different outcome and potentially, but it gets at exactly this question. And part of me is like, I read this prompt. It's utterly generic, right? You know, it could be, are you high school or your college professional? It presumes that the AI is going to say, oh, so someone says, I'm an IT professional who's getting an associate's degree, okay? I'm a high school kid who wants to go to vocational school or I want to go and become a doctor. Or, you know, it presumes the AI is going to go out and find whatever context is pre presented. However, if the educator knows that the kids are in high school and they're working on a personal statement or they're working on open-ended free writing or they're, you know, there's some contextual stuff that's going to guide more specific details in this prompt. And I'm, I've found whenever I've been trying to develop prompts that are fairly generic like this, I always get into cul-de-sacs and it might be because of how I go about it or the way that the AI starts doing pattern recognition. Yeah. Um, it's, so there's, it's, there's some things where there's a fine line between providing enough context that it goes out and gets better information versus asking stuff that's so specific, it doesn't know what to do. So it just says back to me what I said. So I find the balance between something that's fairly generic and a wide funnel, let's call it like this prompt versus something that's more narrowly focused and more targeted in terms of a domain or a genre or a style to be kind of the, the, the place I find myself when I work through these prompts. This seems like a really good template, but to your point, this is designed to have skilled educators writing out these things for their for well, their own purposes, right? But the good thing, David, is okay. Yes, this is generic, but it looks like a pretty decent um, yeah. script yeah. for good practice. Okay. Yes. Yep. Now, what happens is they're going to the students going to answer these questions. Right. Yep. Isn't that's where? Isn't that where the specific kind of assignment and the context comes into yeah. play? Because yeah. by, by the answers that I give as a student, that's going to prompt the machine to yeah. go out and crawl through whatever they crawl through to come back with answers. And then I turn to them and say, as a student, you're not, you know, you're not giving me the feedback I want. Um, right. I need more about X or X. Y, yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's what where I was and listening and reading it. It sounded robotized, like a robot, not a, a it didn't sound like a thinking partner. I in, in I, I don't I don't I don't know. I, I don't know if we, we would need to test it to see if it is or not. I think I, I'm not sure we can tell just by reading it. And he does give an they do they do give an example here as well to, to read through and see how it goes. Um, I, I did want to mention that uh, for, for a while now, there's been a question about who writes these prompts, right? right? Is it, does, does every teacher have to become a good prompt writer 
or yeah. or do does every school need to have a prompt writer who observes classrooms and says that's a really great thing you did there let me turn that into a thinking partner right that's how i envision it it's mm -hmm. more like those those coaches in schools that become the prompt writers maybe we can't right. even get right. this is just maybe i don't know yeah, yeah. but that's a good it is a great lane but you, know, you can see. imagine a world where NCTE is going to have conference session after conference session where people are going to arrive and describe sort of a workflow and order of operations they were able to enact with their students based on a prompt set and what they did in terms of the right. rhetorics. And, right. and that'll just become a copy and paste exercise. And people will quickly grasp when they're, they're forking it in the ways they want. And they'll see these movements through the prompt design as things that they can pick off and use and i say this positively you know i mean yeah, that's, next this is, generation of read write think right it's correct yeah, yeah exactly that exactly yeah. that yes that's exactly it yeah yes by the mm -hmm. way we we don't have that much to go should we look at the rest of what this one is is so yeah, we sure. get a sense so he gives an they i keep saying he they give an example output right below an example of the interaction now just our architecture, our thinking right around thinking partners doesn't have this back and forth necessarily as much, but, but just because to say, students you can naturally, students naturally did that. They didn't huh? have to be told because it, it, you know, AI makes you read more. And that was the part that I really liked about it because the children were checking what AI was was giving them, and so mm -hmm. and so to wait for a response happened really naturally because it gave them something, and then the children had to decipher whether or not the information was true and correct and aligned with their question, the literature, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I was making a, a small technical point. Uh, you, the, the, your point is better. <laughs> the small technical point I was making is that it is possible to do a train of thought. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a dialogue going on for mm. for the AI, for a thinking partner. So, for example, the, the one I've been messing with, the, the, the text image, um, it only gives you, in the end, the um, the prompt for the image, right? But the process it goes through is it, it decides three themes for the text. It then makes an analogy for that. And then it makes a, a prompt based on that analogy, right? So you can actually teach AI to go through that process and you don't necessarily see it. Again, small technical point, really. I, but, but it is, I, the larger point is understanding where the, the architecture around the AI is important to in this process. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's look at the uh, risks for a second. Nikki, do you want to read that for us? Do you, I'm, I'm trying read? to see where you are. Um, um, AI as mentor yeah. risks. Mm -hmm. It's below the, the what looks like torn. And they, they do provide this for each of these, by the way. But yeah. Okay. AI is mentor risks. Confabulation risks for this use of AI are manageable as long as students take the output of the AI as one possible form of feedback rather than assuming it's correct. Oh, we lost you. Okay. Students working with the, with the AI should be aware that they are in charge of their own work and that any feedback they receive should be rigorously checked. Mm -hmm. Students should not trust any citations or sources without checking them themselves. Students who aren't certain the AI is right should check class texts or other trusted sources. They should know that they can act on the AI's advice or question it actively or simply not accept it. Like any AI interaction, Students need clear guidelines, see our suggested guidelines below. You can model the processing class for students new to working with the AI. 
Show students how you use the prompt in a demonstration and how you check your facts or even argue with the AI's feedback. At every step, model the evaluation. Does this make sense? How and why could this be helpful? Should I act on this advice? If so, how? What I like about this, using this, is mostly we don't tell students they should challenge teachers, right? Yeah. Right, um, right. We tell them that they should believe us, that we know everything. And, <laughs> um, and then if I love the trusted sources being textbooks. Yeah, right. Okay, so now they're good, but AI is. Um, so that, that I'm a little, I mean, that's a little... Kind of. That's funny, Nikki. I like no, that. no, it is point on, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think what this does do is help students become much more um, cautious about what what they believe truth is. Right. Okay. So I, I kind of like this is this truly is an example of quote unquote speaking back to power. However, yeah. students are lazy. We're all lazy mm -hmm. human beings. This yeah. works for me. Great. This is what it says. Fine. I love it. You know, I'm done. Isn't this just like I'm I'm struck by this. I'm struck by this that description you just read, Nikki, maps directly to what Bonnie's saying. She finds one of the benefits, Bonnie, you were saying that kids will get feedback and they will sort of be motivated because it's new feedback that they generated. You know, peer writing groups and getting students to talk to each other is something that right. happens well into a semester, if at all, right? But here you are right. creating that fairly quickly. But then to your point, if this can become really enacted um, it, it, and, and becomes a, it's a metacognitive moment. I mean, I think also in a real rudimentary way, it's kind of performative, you know, you're graded on whether you make six comments on blog posts from your stu from your peers, right? So students students go out to get their points for their grade point grade average, and they right. make their comments in a rote way. But you know, the whole business that they're performatively commenting on something, it's public, it's going to be reflected upon. This sort of takes all those aspects of that act and sort of compresses it into an action. And uh, if that can be modeled and becomes part of a student workflow. It does seem to reinforce the idea of interrogating your percept, your, per, 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 uh, position, your position, and it does advocate for you uh, speaking out, speaking out on it. So it's quite, it's very interesting in that way for me. If if students don't get really lazy, okay, that's right. And, yeah. and human beings, oh. we're all kind of lazy, so you know, it's easier to say, "Oh, the machine said this. I'm done." Nikki, um, I, I want to take that um, that lazy point and and say that what I think we've learned from digital text on screen is that it's changed the way we read, right? Mm -hmm. We we surf through stuff, we write all yeah. of that, and so yeah. I, I'm just I'm not I, I hear the lazy point, but I think I think even I think I'm worried about how it's going to change how we read, right? Mm. <laughs> in, in, in because we're getting so much more text, we're going to be surfing through stuff. And yeah, challenging it as we do that is going to be not easy to remember to do, right? I'm saying the same thing as you are, but it's you're not just, just it's not, you're, you're not saying they're lazy. You're just saying they're overloaded. And that I'm saying, sense. I'm saying it's not just the lazy people. It's all of mm -hmm. us are going to be doing, yeah, right, doing right. that. Yeah. You and and I have to raise my hand on that, and which, mm -hmm. because I told Paul, we put everything in with the one piece of literature, everything was in one section. How in the world was I supposed to read over, th over a thousand posts from students? Yeah. It was no way I could do it. So Nikki, even for me, it was no way. And once I saw that 1,000 some comments, Nikki, I never looked at it. I went to the next section. Right. It was overwhelming. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I have a question for you guys. Have yeah. any, I've not done this, but have any of you used hypothesis in your classrooms with? Yes. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, Nikki, yeah. So, I mean, and so, Ronnie's not as, yeah. uh, for lack of a better term, a compliant behavior in a classroom like activity or assignment. Make comments on, you're actively going and commenting on something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has that, 
And, and Nikki, yes, people are lazy, but if there's some obligatory or learned practice yeah, that you're well, going to go do that, then it becomes time built into your schedule. And there's a kind of a commitment to it, if not an obligation to that level of, of, of feedback. And this is what this AI thing is asking of us is to get into a feedback loop with ourselves and the machine. Now, That's a good point. The only difference but, is yeah. uh, the only difference is when I have to convert something to a product, um, yeah. am I going to stop asking the tough questions of and just whatever the machine says, I'm just going to do. Yeah, right. Just doing yeah, whatever. That's, sure. yeah, that's the question, Nikki. That is the yeah. question. Because we the, we were taking the students work. Paul asked them to take their annotations and then copy and paste that and then put it back into it. Well, then put it into AI Mojo and, right. and ask it to create an essay knowing that students don't usually use their annotations to create a literary right. Analysis right. essay, um, right. and so, but some of, and this is how I knew students were reading more, questioning more, because many of them didn't like how AI churned out an essay from how they annotated. They didn't like it, and they said Good. this isn't Good. right. And so they were going back and forth, back and forth. They were questioning each other. They were questioning me. They were bugging Paul in the middle of the night. So I do know <laughs> it made them read more. It was very right. exciting. But how huh? can you harness that? I don't, I don't know. So it's always authentic. I don't know how we would do that. Well, I love the fact that Bonnie, what your students were doing is saying, uh, this isn't me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really what they were saying, that, you know, that English phrase that people use voice, right? But mm -hmm. what they were saying is, okay, this, you know, this machine put this all together and you put all these parts together, even though they may have come from me originally, but this is not my writing. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that they were challenging it. Yeah, um, it was, it was I, interesting. I, I just, I just want to point out that there is a, a couple of paragraphs for guiding the teacher and then instructions for students how to build these themselves. So there's a lot in each of these sections. And this is just one, right? There are actually six more. The tools one isn't very detailed. Um, or there are five more. The I wanted, I wanted to very quickly, if you don't mind, look at one of the prompts that we, um, that I, that we have made and that I put in here. And it is, let's say, let's use yours, uh, David, the writing coach, right? Sure. I think you can right. see it here, right? Yeah, I'll just, I can see what's on screen, yeah. Where? Um, it's Are you um, sharing in your screen? space. I thought I was. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's right here. On, it's, it's on Kumo space. Can you see it? Mm. Yeah, this is a, there's an attempt. To, I was I don't know when I wrote that, but that was an attempt to yeah try to a couple pile months ago. pile many many lenses and objectives into a description. Yeah. So I think this is 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 a is a quote unquote mentor feedback prompt, right? Yeah. That you've created, and we can test again. There's so much, right? But but I I think it's I think it's useful for us to go. It has been for me to go through them. So I think as as we think about them, we can we can say, okay, is this a feedback prompt or is this a prompt for getting information, or is it a prompt, you know, for being a reading partner? You know, I think there are different kinds of prompts, and I think it's a useful beginning of a heuristic of some sort. Yep. So, yeah. Paul, I like what- Yes. I like, we what, should be I like what you've done better than, I, I don't force feed these seven into your work because I'm beginning, because I think- It goes back I'm, and forth. I mean, we may find that our work, yeah. So, sorry, you make your point. I, I'm, I'm um, and some you, of yeah. these, as you point out, some of the last ones aren't really very germane to, to, to working with kids, right? 
Um, so you might want to stick with, you know, the out of the seven, those that really are feedback that or are the kinds of things that teachers are going to use with kids. Hmm. Teachers are not necessarily going to want to have kids teaching the machine, right? So I would put those on the side. I would stick with the things that we know um, would save teachers time and energy and would allow kids to get differentiated instruction. That's my, that's my take on this. I hear you. And you're right about who does what, because sir, even, you know, we all say we don't level out students, but I could tell which class was creating thinking partners and how they were designing AI to even think about interacting with them and text. Um, and how it, it, it was very different, the different groups doing it. Um, and so as, as if I had longer in a school year, I would have had just one um, section being the, the, the prompt engineers which they started calling themselves. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yeah, so a real question of, given the tools that we built here on Now Comment, do you just jump kids in and have them mess around and play, or do you teach them what's your theory, here's a, how you build a prop, you know, I don't know. At some point, they're going to want that or need that, and a teacher is too, but I don't know when, right? So, sooner than later so that the thinking partners will work <laughs> but don't you one. don't you start with the thinking partners that you already have to show them how yeah okay so you got a lot of you don't they don't have to recreate the wheel you know no. you've got to summarize it. and we have and we have made it so you can duplicate and yeah and remix yeah yeah but Still, Nikki, I think you you have to it's, developing a thinking partner is trial and error because even though what you think might work in mm -hmm. as prompt, it might not work right. either. Right. It might be missing some parts for the AI to really think through right. what right. you're trying to, right. to get from but, it. But given, given our, our experience with writing pedagogy, right, <laughs> we have kids free write, and we don't teach them all the details of our rhetorical right. situation, right? Right. So <laughs> to get going, right? So, yeah, there needs to be some getting going, and then at some point some critical thought, obviously. But, yeah. Anyway. So your ultimate goal is to have the kids be prompt engineers, not the teachers? I think that's every, a question. It's yeah. a good question. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, yeah, I can imagine if if I were running a writing class this fall and I wanted to use AI, I'd I'd grab three writing pro, uh, teaching partners that seem to establish sort of foundational basal ideas in terms of interaction and active learning. Spend a week getting kids get, uh, habituated to that, so they understood the interface, they understood the feedback pull out and get to some of the things that that meant uh, that uh, Malik is talking about that we're sharing, like elevating the reflection, the critique, the, 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 the interrogation of the responses, and then, then cut them loose. Cause that, and then depending on what the assignments were going to be, but part of it, Paul, to your point, like we don't have any questions about how to free write. We assume it's going to create a bunch of material and then we're going to sort of gather it in and we're going to apply different kinds of support or students will, develop how to kind of cage stuff in according to their disciplinary focus or their mastery. But this, this new tool has so much potential and so much technical component to it up front, it blows me away. It's not like learning how to drag and drop something into a portfolio. Um, I'd, I've not spent much time with the image generators to see, because that's a whole different modality where you, I mean, the texting and the prompting can create a certain image has its own design uh, criteria. Mm -hmm. But just working with text and having these objectives to lead to interrogation of material, it's a very interesting sort of instructional design question that I'm really curious about. So, so David, I'm, I still am going to go back to that question. 
using yeah. this, what I see yeah. you using with kids in writing is some very good thinking on the part of instructional designers or teachers, right? Um, now I'm hearing you say uh, the ultimate goal is that kids themselves write in these thinking partners, which other kids can use or they can use themselves. Is that the ultimate goal? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the ultimate goal. I, I, what's, what's good about it is that they think of things that we don't think of. Yeah, I'm not. That, yeah. I'm just asking, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think I, I think everybody should be messing around. Myself, but yeah. And in, in this in this in these in this building stage of it, but will uh, the building stages of AI ever end? I mean, I don't. I don't know, but Nikki. I want to go back to your point. These things, these tools seem in always inevitably. Technology always and inevitably leads with productivity, and then maybe or eventually people find ways to adopt it for their own personal, creative, or imaginary needs. Mm -hmm. And and ideally, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know, and in school, you need to do certain things, whether it's an assignment or you have a job application. You need it. You have a goal. And mm -hmm. the tools help move the goal. And that seems very mm -hmm. intentional and, and productivity aligned. But to mm -hmm. your other point, and much of what you've been doing, Bonnie, I gather, and certainly, Paul, what you've been up to is sort of cutting these things loose and letting it's it's almost like in the workplace, it's versus in the consumer side. I want to be a I just want to play with these things. I want to make the Yeshiva one. I want the fire guru. I want the and that's when it becomes there's something gets activated and it gets remixed and repurposed. And if, if someone's developing a flywheel of their own thinking and engagement on whatever terms, that seems to be the good outcome. So I would say to answer your question, Nikki, 50, 50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. but I don't see, I don't think you can get to the latter one, meaning a kid's just going to make a jillion of them if they don't, if they haven't mastered the rhetorics and right. the, the, right. the order right. of operations here. So well, first of all, we have to kind of believe that this works, right? That's right. Why would I make these things if I didn't if, find them useful? Yeah. If I did, if I didn't think they were going to generate anything of any worth. Yeah, and, but and Bonnie, to hear you, you're seeing that happen, Bonnie. From yeah, I'm saying. seeing it happen, and I and you know we have to really take into consideration as educators that the, these children are the ones that are being given cell phones in the shopping carts as infants to calm down <laughs> for their parents. And so now we're giving them, you know, access into creating something using this computer that they've had in their hands since empty. I, I think, you know, this is just yeah. a gr it's really great for them. And not only is it just, you know, it's just, it's not only hand-eye coordination. They really have to think. And mm -hmm. they really have to use some of their, their intellectual capabilities that have yet to be measured mm -hmm. um, because of their interaction with technology. And I'm sure all of us ha have to ask a young person, how do I do this? <clears throat> on a device at some point or another. And and they're now they're able to get in at a ground level and just take us away. Take us away. Go, go. All right. We're gonna continue. <laughs> um I just want to thank you all. No, I love for, this. That's why I show up all. Yeah, good. Good wow. thinking. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you. I will continue. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. And don't worry, Nikki. We're not going to throw this at this at the residents. <laughs> no, it's it's not that I don't. And and they may I know be. You're, they may be ready. Yeah, but they may be ready. It's just that I know you you've used habits of mind. It seems to resonate, yep. and I just want you to be you know cautious about We're how much you're to get done. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, okay. That, I mean that helps. That we were yeah. That's helpful. Talk to you all soon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. Good night. Bye.